Welcome to this video, how to analyze the financial feasibility of a new biodiesel plant. Before we start, if you like to see more videos from us, please push the subscribe button. The purpose of this analysis is that we want to assess the financial attractiveness when setting up a new biodiesel plant. And for this, we need to run our analysis in a financial model. Here we're using one of the templates from efinancialmodels.com. The first step in our analysis is to collect a set of data. On one hand, we need to collect the required investment to set up the plant. This is on one, on the one, ha on one hand, uh, our capex items for the building, machinery, for the equipment. On the other hand, my, there will also be some networking capital needed to be financed and maybe also some costs until the first, um, first production. Second, we need to decide what will be the feedstock. So there can be different types of oils. So we, can, we have to decide which feedstock we are using. We also need to decide on which alcohol we're going to use and then how this, feed, how this feedstock is being converted to biodiesel. We set here a, the capacity of our envisaged plant and the target annual outputs. So this will give us the utilization factor. So now we can double check and now we need to know how much of the feedstock we will require per year and how much will be the annual output of our biodiesel plant. Having this, we also need to have a look at the prices and costs. So what are the input costs for the oil and for the methanol alcohol? And then what will be the output? At what price can we sell our biodiesel and eventual byproducts? In terms of the costs, there are two types of costs. One is the direct costs. So this depends on volumes. We have here, we have to list all the items and specify the assumptions. If there are utilities to be used, we also will have to count them in, in our budget. And on the other hand, there might be a fixed cost as well as employee costs. So all this needs to be planned out and specified so that we can get to a annual budget. There are other assumptions to, to have a look at. What may be also worth mentioning is not all of this total investment needs to be financed with, um, with equity. So there might also be something which can be financed with debt and we can have here positions to count, account for that. In terms of the building, um, in terms of the building time plan, we need to decide when we can start the production and how we are going or by when we are going to spend the capex items so that we can move them around as per the, in our forecast. So these are all the settings required. Then we need to plot this on a yearly time scale. We need to account for future price increases. We need to account when the which year we are going to produce uh, or our plant will be operational for how many months. Um, the output or the uh, conversion rates, they normally should stay the same. In case they change, we, we would uh, influence them or we would change them year by year. And this allows us then to forecast the annual production volumes and also the required sourcing of the, of the input. Then multiplying with the prices, we multiply volumes and prices will give us the revenue line and then also on the cost side, the direct cost for running our plant. And we work all this through, all these schedules through until we have all the figures together to build a financial um, plan in terms of the uh, forecasted income statement. So we want to make sure there will be enough profit. And apart from profit, we'll, by building also the balance sheet, we can also better understand the required cash flows which are, which uh, in, in also in the sequence, the Cartis cash flow will happen. When do we need to invest? How much? What's the drawdown of the capex? And 
when do we need to, uh, to also to start servicing debt and by when eventually we can take out some money in form of dividends or other cash proceeds to equity shareholders. So all this needs to be calibrated in terms of the debt assumptions. We also need to get to start with initial expectation how much debt this plant can take on and then we can basically um, see how when this debt needs to be deployed and when this needs to be repaid and we can simply change the assumption to plot this in a different sequence on our time plan. And this allows us to basically build a quite a solid forecast on the future revenues and profits of this plant. We will have a, need to have a last look on if these figures all are realistic and can be backed up by, by our research, by our studies. And then once we have that, this forecast will result in financial metrics. So here we will focus mostly on the IRRs, the unlevered and levered. So this IRR needs to be bigger than the opportunity cost of capital. And in this case, if we say our cost of capital is 10%, the IRR is bigger. This means this plant is pretty much, should be pretty much uh, feasible or financially attractive to build. And if you use debt financing, we can even get a better, a more levered return for equity shareholders. All these assumptions are examples only just to illustrate how the model works. Another analysis we need to run is a break-even analysis. And here we want to focus on a year with uh, stabilized uh, volumes. And basically what we need to figure out is in case, um, in this case, in case the, the volumes would change. Here we plan for more than 5 million gallons. But the question is, how many gallons would be needed to reach break even in that year? And the break even analysis should answer that. And this break even points could can be different if we, um, depending if we run this for volumes or for price. And if you can see here for price, this would, uh, uh, this can, price could go a bit lower, but here also at, in this case, at around uh, $3, $3 per gallon is the required price to reach uh, break even. Then our analysis, we can complement also with a um, sensitivity analysis, and we can basically analyze and see if we would change any of these factors, how much or by how much would the IRR change? And as you can see, these factors with the or these uh, parameters with the have will have the any change here will have a biggest impact impact on IRR. Another discussion which might come up are basically uh, might be a monthly budget. So there needs to be um, some thought in how the first year will play out. So let's say if the plant comes into operation here in July, so the volume should uh, um, arrive here, but eventually we might already have some costs um, on, on here and we just need to to move this or prepare this budget by moving the costs or volumes around and we can also do this for the later years if we depending how much um, how much details we need in terms of a monthly budget another aspect we might want to consider are what happens if we take different shareholders on board so normally we have this uh, team of founders, but then we also have um, new investors coming in. So each of these investors will contribute to a certain amount of funding, of the funding required. So let's say this is the funding amount required. So these investors will contribute to different degrees to this funding uh, amount. And then in return, they will get an equity stake in the project. And now what we need to figure out if we do it like this, Will that work out for these investors? And we do this by running also an analysis and by basically um, plotting the forecasted uh, cash flows on a pro forma basis for each type of investors. And we can clearly see what will he be his share of the free cash flows and to what IRR will this result into. And this 
uh, is it basically this will allow us to obtain a quite comprehensive um, view on how our biodiesel biodiesel plant might work out and how attractive such a plant can be in financial terms. I hope this walkthrough gave you a better idea how to do this. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and visit our website efinancialmodels.com. A link to the model is included in the description below. Thank you for watching.